All right, guys, we are back with a vengeance here for round, I believe, four. I think this is round four of the League with Cursed Amulet. We got our nice little cool copies of Garrick Relentless just chilling over here. If any of you guys are wondering, um, on Magic Online, these guys cost a cool 0.1 tickets. I know it's a little hard to afford, but um, for, for just that high price of... Literally ten cents, you can get three copies of Garrick to try out this little, this little um, test for yourself. So far, I've been enjoying it at the very least. I don't know if he's good, but he's definitely not bad in my opinion. But time will tell. And with that, let's just hop straight into the matches. We are currently two and one so far with Cursed Amulet. Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Um, I didn't mention this in the little deck intro part just a few seconds ago, but. It does bear repeating. If you're interested in the specific details of this list, you can find that in match one, where you'll hear why I'm playing Garrick Relentless and the changes I've made to accommodate for it and all of that good stuff. Um, but for this video, we're just focusing on the gameplay. <laughs> I said this before, and I feel like I'm saying this way too often, but I would really, really like to get a Garrick Relentless into play. We did in one of the previous matches, and it did pretty good. I'm going to keep this. Um, but yeah, I'd just like to see it do some, some really crazy action here. Here we're going to be Vesuvaing, uh, their cavern in order to play an amulet on two and to explore, perhaps. Just kidding. We're actually just going to have a turn two titan here, no big deal. Don't worry about it. Although, they could just get us with meddling mage, and that would be pretty annoying. Luckily, we do have main board outs to meddling mage. That's right, Garrick's making a comeback again. I can't stop talking about it. Shame that we most likely won't be able to kill them with this Titan. So if we go second amulet, growth chamber, use two to explore and float four more, that's six. We can get Boros Garrison and uh, Slayer Stronghold, double haste to put it up to ten. There's a Meling Mage. That's a rest in peace. But anyways, that would be... Uh, 10, and then we attack and search for a the other Vesuva to copy the red-white land, and then uh, Sun Home for the haste. They chose Primeval Titan, so that is the card that cannot be played. Interesting. Now let's go ahead and get this annual into play, and I think we're going to start off on an explore here. I wonder how much mana we can make this turn if we spike a Karn, we might be able to... I, I don't know, maybe not. But if we if we can do so and we spike a Karn off the top, we might be able to actually get rid of this Meddling Mage. We didn't. So we have the nuts with the amulet here. <laughs> the question is, oh, what are we doing with it? Uh, hmm. I think the play is going to be third amulet and Vesuva their cavern, and we'll name giant here. <laughs> That's just way too many amulet triggers. We'll play our dryad. We'll play this snow forest, and we'll pass. Yeah, we kind of need to find a Valakut here. Of course, the one deck that has a, an efficient way to stop a turn to kill is the one that we play against with the nut draw. It actually would have been super crazy. So with Triple Amulet, you get to chain Primeval Titans and no more Primeval Titans, and then haste all of them, and all that good stuff. <sighs> Disappointing that they just had to have the turn 2 meddling mage. Although I guess they could have had a freebooter to take our pact as well. And that would have also done the trick. I don't think there's a point in packing for anything here. Because we don't have like a main ward tracker or anything like that. So I guess we're just going to swing. Swing. 
And then there's another question of do we play out the Simic Growth Chamber or not? It gets us closer on uh, potentially a Valakut. I think we do. If we top deck a Valakut, then we would be in pretty good shape. So we're going to yield to Amulet Triggers this turn. Oh, I have to do it for each Amulet individually. Kind of a, a yikes. Maybe we pick up the Cavern here to copy another Simic Growth Chamber, actually, so we have maximum mana in play. I don't hate that. Oh, we don't get another land drop. Okay, well, that's fine. We still have access to a Bounce Land, then. Because next time, uh, next turn, we could go Valakut into Vesuva, perhaps, and then be able to kill the Meling Mage and still be able to play a Titan, so that's our out. We could draw Valakut or uh, Talari West here, so three hits. Pretty unlikely. Pretty unlikely. Phantasmal image. I don't think that actually bothers us here. It still it doesn't change our outs, so. Oh, engineer explosives. Yeah, I don't have that one in the main, but that's a that's a pretty good name by them. <laughs> I wonder how much they realize this uh meddling mage is doing. Valakut. That is not a Valakut. It buys us a turn, sort of. We'll play it. Um, yeah, we'll do it. We want as many lands in play as possible, I think. Actually, we might need to hold on to the Vesuva so that we have enough triggers to kill the, both meddling mages. So I'm actually going to... I'm actually going to pick the Vesuva back up and pass. <laughs> as weird as that is, it's literally playing a land for no reason, but um, it's better to hold on to the Vesuva in case we draw some way to get Valakut. If we're able to manage that, though, we might be in pretty good position. And by that, I mean basically just win immediately. As long as we don't mess up the sequencing. Which I have been known to do every so often in the past. Not not super commonly, but on occasion. The Mantis Rider doesn't change anything. <laughs> They're attacking with the Noble Hierarch. Oh man, no. I know exactly what this means. This means that they have the two mana one. The Thalia's Lieutenant. Well, this guy's going under the bus. And this guy's going in front of uh, the one on Primeval Titan, I suppose. It would be taking one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we'll take lethal anyways if they have it, so. Looks like they have it. All right, well, man, that was an insane curve from our human's opponent there. All the way down to zero cards. Let's see what we have gotten there. Oh, no! We would have gotten there. All right, all right, all right. That's ridiculous. All right, so against humans, we want engineered explosives, especially if it's so good that they name it in the blind and we don't even have access to it in the main. I think we definitely will want a card such as that. Reclamation Sage is good. I like killing their vials, and I'm actually willing to pitch a green card in order to do so as well, because sometimes they lean really hard on vial. I like Tracker as a way to draw cards to try to get out from underneath a, uh, like, a meddling mage type lock. Beast Within, I don't think is relevant. Obstant Bailoth is not that great. It's like, it gains us some life, but usually they're clocking us by Mantis Riders, and we can chump block their, um, they're uh, big guys like the Champion of the Parishes and such. We can definitely trim like two pack, maybe even one Titan, just because we only need one Titan to like get the ball rolling. Tribe Scout's not bad. Um, I don't love Azusa, although it might be nice to have one in case we have multiple amulets, but we'll see. Explore is way too slow. I like Garrick just because it can kill meddling mages and, and whatnot. See what else? We could cut like one of our one drops, or one of our titans, or one of our lands. I think cutting a Bajuka Bog is going to be the best here. 
This is it's ETB tapped. It's non-green, and it their graveyard is completely irrelevant. So I think this is going to turn out best for us. Yes, we would like to play first. Huh. So we have the explosives, and we have all of the lands we need to cast our Titan, but we have no ramp. And we have no way to interact with a meddling mage if we try to explosives on one to stop them from from being speedy. Like if they lead on Vile into Champion, then we'd probably need to get explosives on one and blow it. I don't know. It's kind of a weird one. And it doesn't have amulet either. It's kind of a risk, but I'm gonna mulligan it. I think we can do better. Huh. This one's kind of similar, but this way our answer we have an answer for Vile in multiple different ways, and we have a trump blocker, we have some life gain, and our titan's a little bit faster with Garenbrig, although we need to draw more green sources. I don't love this, but I'm going to keep it. And because we have Rex Age, it's probably going to be right to put Force of Vigor back. I don't know if we're going to be fast enough to get this Rex Age into play when we need it, though. We'll see. We don't really have green cards to pitch to Force at this point, though, so I'm going to play it like that. We'll lead on Garen Brig Go. That way we can top deck one of our green one drops and be able to play it. They mold a five. Wow. Ironically, they could still beat us from five if they just had infinite meddling mages, <laughs> pretty much. So, what I'd love to happen is for us to draw a dismember and then to play a meddling mage naming Titan or something. And then they play a Phantasmal image with only Meddling Mage in play, and we dismember their Meddling Mage in response so that their Phantasmal image can't copy anything and both die. Is that asking too much? It probably is. Noble Hierarch. Okay. Dryad is a welcome addition to our crew. Go ahead and get this fountain into play. We'll pass it back. Shame that our Reclamation Sage does not have a nice little pretty Aether Vial to, to blow up. We like the chaos, you know. This is a Meddling Mage. Okay. I wonder what they name here. They named Dryad. That's quite the annoyance. I guess we're playing Boros Garrison then? Unless we want to play Reclamation Sage just to block. But nah. They're stuck on lands too, so if they happen to draw a Vile, then Sage blowing up the Vile would be a huge game. So I'm not going to do anything at the moment. We can still just draw two untapped green sources and Titan in two turns. So. Oh, well, they're not stuck on lands anymore. If we had a green source, I could almost see pacting for a tireless tracker and playing a land, a green source, so that we could pay for the pack and have our tracker in play. I don't know how good that would be, though. They could also just reflect your mage it, which would be pretty annoying. Another meddling mage. Ugh. Yeah, I think... What's this? Engineer explosives. So they're going for everything but Titan. Which is going to work out for them unless we draw green sources. So, that's a green source. Interesting. So, do we make the pack for tracker play? We could also just alternatively slam a Reclamation Sage just to threaten a block. And that way they can't attack with the meddling mages at all. Unless they draw Thalia's Lieutenant, or already have one. And then, if we top deck an untapped green source, we can slam Titan. And that way we don't have to pay for our pack trigger. And if not, then we can untap with 4 mana, pack for a tracker, play a land, and be able to immediately crack the clue from it. So, I guess this is going to be the best line. It feels awful, though. I do not love it, but I think it's better than just tapping off for 2 turns straight just to get a 3-2 into play. Things are not looking 
that particularly fantastic here. They might end up looking a lot better if we can just get a basic forest, though. <laughs> they named Wizard. Interesting. Is this a third meddling mage? <laughs> okay. Titan, Engineer Explosives, and Dryad. Okay, well, we're not blocking. Amulet. Interesting. I guess we're going for Tracker. Yep. Now we could crack Clue or we could put Amulet into play. Considering that they have a Meddling Mage on Titan, unless we top deck. And we don't have a bounce line to go with the amulet anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and just clue on their instep, I think. I think that's going to be the best play. And if they give me the opportunity to trade with their champion of the parish, I think I will choose not to, actually. Because this uh, tireless tracker is what's going to draw our, hopefully, our dismembers in order to deal with some of this that's going on here. Reflector Mage. I think we still want a clue here. Well, there's a bounce land. Things are looking quite awful for us at the moment. Take five. Yeah, um, not really lining up so far. I guess we're playing Field of the Dead and passing. A ways away from using that one. Oh, wait, no, we don't want to pass because we can still play this amulet for sure. <laughs> this is a really insane mold of five. <laughs> and they have the mantis. No? Huh. Single dismember starts to pick this apart. I don't know what we would have to name though. So this one's on Titan, this one's on explosives, and this one's on Dryad. Uh are we getting to the chump blocking point yet? I think we are. Let's go ahead and absorb some of this damage. Second amulet A. Guess we play it. So if we growth chamber, then we'll have potentially four mana in case we draw something with our clue. But I'm not sure what we would play if we had the four mana. We could draw like an Azusa. If we draw a Dryad, we can't play it. If we draw a Summoner's Pack, there's no real point in pacting. Um, if we draw a Dismember, we're going to end up having to pay four life anyways. If we draw an Engineering Explosives, we can't play it. So I guess it's just going to be best to play Cavernous Souls here, 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 here. Yep, do want to get that clue for sure. Grazer. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. Alright, we'll untap. Float some mana, untap. Okay, so let's go ahead and crack this clue, I think. Green pool. I guess we want, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we pick up a Garenbrig, we can play Breeding Pool next turn and start getting Field going. 
but we won't have a repeatable land to play with Tyo's tracker to get more clues. I think we do need access to that. Yeah, I guess we just got to pick up the Simic Growth. Eventually, our tracker is going to outgrow their champion. Or they'll just... I was going to say, or they'll just play another meddling mage. Mantis Rider's not all that terribly scary at the moment. We'll probably put this Grazer under the bus. We also have Garrick, which we can top deck to kill a meddling mage, and that would be pretty good. Hmm. We could trade with the champion. I just don't think that's going to be good enough, to be honest. I think we need our champion... Oh, we need to out outclass this champion. Let's see, so... I guess we're playing Breeding Pool. We, we have two mana from the Breeding Pool because of the double amulet. We'll be able to crack, and if we find a Garrick, we can play... We can play the Garrick... And still have three mana up, so we could Garrick kill the one on Dryad and play Dryad and be able to get another clue, I guess. And that's fine. Let's go ahead and get this Breeding Pool into play, I guess. This tracker is doing a lot of work. Uh, let's use the field, I guess. Tribe Scout. Okay. Doesn't really matter how we tap this exactly. I guess we're passing back. <laughs> we're still not quite outclassing their champion of the parish, sadly. And unfortunately, this Mantis Rider means that we're not going to be able to um, dismember unless we are able to get Dryad into play first, so... Our outs are significantly reducing here. We would need to draw Garrick into Engineer Explosives to be able to do anything here. Let's see, we would have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So Garrick into EE -E on 2 and blow it up is 8 mana. We'd have, hold on, we can also activate Garen Rig, so we'd have 1, 2, uh, three, four, to activate. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Unless I counted that wrong. Let's see. There's one, two, uh, three, four to activate. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen mana. So. If we draw a Garrick, that's fine. If we draw a Garrick and play it, we'll be down to nine potential mana. We kill the one on in Engineer Disposes. I mean, we could play a Dryad as well. We'll see. We have to draw a Garrick first, though, so. Oh, they're attacking with everything. Interesting. Are we just dead here? I am assuming that we need to block. On. Uh, cancel. This one is on Primeval Titan. So if we block here and we block there, we're taking three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we're just dead. Okay. Not much we can do about it. Would we have gotten there? Nope. All right. Well, that was a bit of a shame. I felt like kind of an insane match against humans. Although humans is a bad matchup for Amulet in general, so I'm not super surprised to have lost that one. Anyways, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and call that video right there. If you enjoyed it or like the content, then go ahead and give me a like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And I will see you for the last round very shortly. This is Redface Menace, signing off.